Okay, so I've uh, gotten to this stage with a dehumidifier. I've got a high side service valve put on and a low side service valve. And I tried to run it on the hydrocarbon blend B refrigerant that I made, which was supposed to be an R134A substitute, at least in car air conditioning systems, that would work. But it never worked in this. All that would happen is part of the evaporator would just freeze up. So, another YouTube user, he's called MC Pletcher, he does a lot of refrigeration videos. He's a bit better at it than me anyway, but um, he says it's maybe because I've been charging as vapour and not as liquid. And it's maybe because in my refrigerant bottle, maybe that, maybe they're, uh, the propane's evaporating off more than the isobutane and I'm not getting the correct mix. So there's maybe too much propane and not enough isobutane in there. So I'm going to try charging as a liquid. Now the problem with that is the valve and hoses freeze up. Um, and then the connections start getting really loose. So I'll just have to do it very slowly. Um, it's got CO2 in it just now. At pretty low pressure. Um, it's because I purged it out. I'm also going to put a filter dryer on it. But I think another issue may be, I've maybe partly blocked up the capillary tube too because I think some dirt got in, um, just some very small fragments of copper when I was when I, uh, swaged out the end of the service valve and put it on onto this piece here and then soldered it. But uh, I'm going to vacuum it down just now and uh, eat some ice cream and then come back and have a look at it. My bottle of refrigerant upside down, ready to charge as liquid, and I'll switch this on. So our low side pressure's gone way down, so I need to let some refrigerant flow in. Okay, so I can hear things beginning to happen in the evaporator. I can already see that it's beginning to freeze up. But um, we'll give it time yet. Yeah. Because it's a dehumidifier, it's um, a high back pressure system, so that means that the low side pressure in these sort of systems is, is going to usually be very high. Unlike, say, a fridge or a freezer where the pressure would be maybe low, around maybe 10 psi or so. So I think we could do with a little bit more in there. Already the valve on my tank is going to get really cold. As is all the refrigerant lines. It sure is making all the right noises anyway, but uh, our evaporator is, I don't think it's fully filled up yet. I do not too bad actually. It's still a bit frozen there. Give it a little bit more I think. I don't know, but I think maybe charging the liquid is a solution. And I just need to look at my power consumption. Yeah, already it's just a little bit too high. Um, well, that's exactly where it should be. But um, this here's a suction line go back to the compressor, but I remember when it was running on R134A, it was really quite a bit um, colder than that. So 
it's a good match, but it's okay. It seems to be working, sort of, but it's, well, it's not perfect. As you can see, there's still some ice there. That didn't happen at all when it ran on R134A. And not even the whole evaporator is cold, so... That's not ideal, but what I'm going to do is convert this into an air conditioner anyway. I'll take out the condenser, and that'll be, in fact, a water filter housing. Um, but I'm going to replace the tubing on it with 5mm tubing, because that's what the condenser on this uses anyway. And the condenser I'll take off this will just go on this system, and it'll just be air cooled. So yeah, we're still dealing with a bit of a mismatch as part of the evaporator is still freezing up, so, well, much more of it now, check our power consumption, I can maybe put a little bit more refrigerant in. And when I add refrigerant, the ice goes away then comes back again, maybe because the refrigerant I'm putting in is quite warm relatively. But I think for this thing to work properly again on this refrigerant, I'm probably going to have to change out the capillary tube to something a little less restrictive. Yeah, so it looks like we've got half half the evaporator frozen up. So it's, it's not really working as it should be. I can see condensation on about, just about up to here maybe. And the rest is just, well... It's just um, not got any condensation on at all. And now the suction line, uh, it's pretty much just maybe a slightly below ambient temperature. And it should be really quite cold because that's the only way this compressor gets cooled. Um, because already it's getting quite warm and eventually it'll be roasting hot. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, the power consumption has gone down again, so what I'm going to do is take off the high side hose. Well, I'll switch it off first and let everything equalise. And I'll take off the high side hose because that will probably be holding um, a fair amount of liquid. Um, the hose itself is actually slightly warm, so if I get all the liquid to boil out the hose and back into the system, I'll just play about with the low side and not worry so much about the high side. Yeah, so when I switched it off, um, I heard a bit of a bubbling sound, well, kind of like, you know, sort of a boiling sound, and this bit here got really cold, so that was all the liquid coming out of the hose, and that hose will probably hold a good few grams of liquid. It does behave totally different on this refrigerant. Um, on R134A, the power consumption when it started up was much lower, so I'm just going to give it a while to stabilise. So after removing the high side hose, it seems to be behaving differently now. Uh, power consumption at 211 watts, roughly where it should be actually, but I can't see any frost so far. And I think that's because a, a bit of refrigerant was released when I took it off. I did get that, um, I did get a burst of white mist coming out, so that means that there was still some liquid in the hose. And the return line is reasonably cold as well, um, so that's a good sign. But still there's not enough cooling refrigerant getting back to that compressor. So, it's still running and we haven't actually got any water to fall off it just yet. But the compressor is now too hot to keep my hand on for any reasonable amount of time, so... I think there's going to have to be changes made to our uh, metering device here. Um, well, it should be more or less restrictive, I'm not exactly sure. It's, uh, it's a bit of a headache, this. But it is working to a certain extent. Just about the whole thing has now got condensation on it. So... Um, Once I change it into an air conditioner, I'll probably be able to iron out all the problems, uh, be able to find out um, what size this capillary tube is as well, 
and uh, I'll update then when I get onto that project.